Look at that beautiful nature. Or don't. I don't care. Because this episode, part two of our, uh, City Skylines series is not about nature. Quite the contrary. It's actually, uh, about the opposite. We've got a bunch of problems in our city. <laughs> And the reason for those problems is because I've tried to record this episode three times now and I've had to scrap it each time. In fact, we had a very successful oil field here and I tore it down just to show you guys how the oil industry runs and works in city skylines. Anyway, we'll deal with these problems that I, you know, occurred or that occurred because I neglected my city for like 40 minutes total worth of time. We're still doing good though, 21,000 income, 300,000, uh, dollars roughly in the kitty in the pool but uh yeah T today's episode of city skylines episode two is our oil field walkthrough and uh yeah what you want to do to create an oil field in city skylines if you want to generate a lot of income but also a lot of pollution for your city is first uh select and click the information button in the upper left hand corner then check uh, your natural resources now, you have a couple different natural resources in uh, City Skylines. You have green, which is forestry. That's a renewable resource. You can continue to make money off that resource indefinitely. And yellow is farming. That's also renewable. You can make money off of that indefinitely. Now we get to our um, resources that you can run out of, our non-renewable resources. Namely, ore and oil. Ore is in blue, and oil is in uh, black. The color of money. I have uh, made a couple different uh, industries so far in our city just to get practice. I know you'll see that there's a big leap between episode one and episode two, but just wanted to get familiarized. We've got a lot more to go, as you can see. This is just kid stuff. There's nothing. Once we get into uh, these areas, that's where we're going to really start booming. Uh, but anyway, yeah. <laughs> um, we've uh, tested out two different oil industry uh, locations and as you can see this place is not doing so well it is smoldering and it's about to be a wreck we'll have to clear that out similarly to this little happy accident we had you'll need to have some fire stations near your oil fields there's no doubt about that you'll also need some residential areas for your workers not too close or yes, your uh, workers may die like these trees have this used to be a very lush landscape before we moved this really nasty industry in. So you may be asking yourself, okay, that's all fine and good. I'd love to uh, rake in some money for my city. I'd love to get into the oil industry. How do I do that? Well, first of all, after finding your oil industry uh, locations, this is a very viable location for the oil industry. We're going to go into the uh, district tab. And within the district tab, we will just make a regular old district. We'll paint that district. I'm actually just gonna tighten this up a little bit. We don't need it on the water. But after you uh, paint your district out, we have painted just about... Oh, wrong button. Alright, see that? We've encompassed just about the entire oil field and then some to account for the uh, gradient. As you can see, it goes from dark to light. And we want to cover the light as well as the dark, which we've already done. After you have that selected, you want to click on the uh, oil industry selection and make this an oil industry designated district, which we have already done. And after you do all that stuff, you want to click on your district, rename it if you want to. By the way, guys, this is our city, our massive family city. So what we name different things is, is up to you. If you guys uh, have an idea of what you think we could name our oil industry field over here, you can tweet it at me or Facebook it at me or uh, comment below. And yeah, <laughs> we'll uh, rename that by the next episode, hopefully. In any case, back to the educational stuff. You want to select policies and make sure under city planning that industrial space planning is ticked. Once you tick this box, it allows industry work to go even more effectively by overlooking a few work safety laws. It doubles the amount of goods produced by industry buildings. Now, since oil is a non-renewable resource, you want to milk it for all of its worth. And that's what we intend to do. So, once you have that ticked, you will produce a uh, double, and you definitely want that to happen. Speaking of milking it for all of its worth, 
we're going to do that right now by I deleted all the roads we used to have that all there we had some oil industry buildings as well but I deleted it to show you guys how you want to work the roads for this see if the trees have started dying no wasn't there long enough you can see some of the pollution already starting here though uh black I mean purple that's where this oil industry building used to be and this gravelly look is because of the power plant so you'll want to uh set up your uh, water intake and waste output. I already have waste outputting here, as you can see by this ugly color, so I placed that there, and we already have the, you know, bridges connecting from the highways uh, to our city and to our oil fields. You'll want to have plenty of room for industry to move along. As you can see, traffic can be a bit of a problem. Check this out. <laughs> this is all because of the oil industry. Really, all of this right here is because of the oil industry as well. We're going to rework this at uh, some point in a later episode, but traffic is a whole nother beast. Look at that. Oil industry problems. Hashtag. Nice problems to have. I'm sure that Jeff Bridges can handle this just fine. We've got one-way bridges uh, in both directions, so that should uh, help out a lot. In any case, we're going to use uh, dirt roads for our currently named Sheffield Heights oil fields and we're going to not make these roads very pretty to the contrary we're actually going to yeah, let's make this yeah we're gonna make it pretty uh, systematic and very conservative in terms of space uh, as you can see the blue the faint blue lines that emit from the uh, solid blue line are your construction areas we want to live we want to leave just a, a little area in between here in case we need to put power lines there or wind turbines. And we're going to make sure everything is perfectly square, no curves anywhere. <laughs> curves are a great thing. Um, they disperse traffic and uh, traffic takes a little longer to uh, uh, work its way through it. But we're not going to be worrying about that with our oil fields. We want the maximum number of buildings we can possibly get. And in order to uh, make that happen, we're going to have to just make it a little ugly. Alright, let's have another one branch down here. Have that connect. Have this one go here. It's going to be right on the water, so... This is not a green business. Let me remind you. We will add some curved roads here. Just because it's far enough out. It doesn't make a huge difference. Except here we will uh, be a little more careful. And make these straight. Excellent. Now we'll start zoning. For the oil industry to move in, you need it to be industrial zones. So all we have to do is fill these in, and as soon as I'm done, uh, yeah, we'll return in just a second. Through the magic of editing, you don't have to watch this tedious process. And look at that. The oil industry has finally moved in. And we're starting to profit off of it and make some money after all of our hard work laying down these dirt roads and sectioning off these districts. Dino Legacy. It's actually my favorite oil building. I love the name. It's just really badass. Anyway, um, yeah, all our hard work has paid off. But it wasn't without its own trials and tribulations. I actually recorded episode three, which is setting up a small, viable town uh, to supply workers and whatnot in episode two because I waited for like 10 minutes on uh, triple speed acceleration of time, which is a long time to wait while doing absolutely nothing. And I was trying to figure out why the industry was not moving into this oil field. I thought maybe we need to make workers. Thus part three of creating the viable community to supply, uh, you know, burning industry. But that wasn't it either. So I finally figured out why no one was moving in to uh, our designated industry. What you need to do is after you um, zone everything as an industrial zone within your district, if no one is moving in, you have to erase your entire district and lay it back down 
as a completely new district with no remnant of your old district remaining and select it as an oil industry district and go back into policies and make sure that industrial space planning is ticked. In any case, I'm not sure what the glitch was, but I'm assuming is because uh, I had a false start. Um, since I had to re-record this episode, my files are corrupted the first time, well, the second time I tried to do it, and I had to lay all this road down uh, uh, on top of old roading that was here. I destroyed the old roading, ripped it up, and I think it confused the game, so I just had to um, make a new district. In any case, our oil industry is starting to move in, but while I re-recorded and re-recorded this episode about three times over, whoa. What? That was weird. It threw me out of our city space. Anyway, we have a ton of issues that we need to fix. Look at this. We need power. Our citizens are sick and dying in Raccoon City. And Field of Dreams is all but abandoned. Look at this. There's so many icons, it's lagging. <laughs> And we've also got a lot of abandoned areas in our main industrial zone. This whole strip... Let me take you down here. This entire strip used to be a successful industrial zone. It now stands empty as the pillars of industry begin to crumble. We need to fix this. This is bad. Thank you guys for tuning in to part two with me. Be sure to check out part three and four in future parts of our city and tweet at me facebook at me tell me what you'd like to see done in our city or uh what you'd like to see our different districts named if you see a default name on a district tweet at me the name that you'd like to see and we will begin implementing that stuff this is our city and i hope you guys will enjoy this journey that you take with me on massiveopolisville it's our city and i can't wait to see it flourish Thank you guys for watching and as always, game massively.